In cosmology, we seek to understand the universe as a whole. What does it contain? How did it begin? How will it end? And why is it the way it is? In the 21st century, cosmology is an experimental science. We have telescopes all across the Earth and in space that have given us a beautifully clear picture of what's out there. But seeing more, measuring more, has not answered all our theoretical questions. In some ways, it has only sharpened them. Perhaps the most important question in cosmology today is, why is the universe so large? How large is it? Well, it's quite possibly infinite. But the part that we can see is finite, but vast, almost 100 billion light years across. And it's profoundly empty, mostly void, just barely dusted with stars. The problem is that quantum mechanics, our exquisitely tested theory of the very small, does not allow the universe to be completely empty. Quantum mechanics fills voids. It fills voids with particles that appear and disappear. And Einstein taught us that particles curve space. Matter curves space. And so the particles that quantum mechanics makes in otherwise empty space bend the universe and make it expand or collapse. How much do they bend it? Well, as theoretical cosmologists, we're concerned with fundamental mathematical equations, quantum mechanical equations. And part of our work is to find solutions of those equations that describe universes. Almost every solution that we find is a universe not much larger than the smallest particles it contains. A universe in which the smallest particle is an electron? It will be not much bigger than an electron. There's no space to live in a universe the size of an electron, and there's no time to evolve. But here we are in a gigantic ancient universe. And the matter around us is made of very tiny pieces. Quarks and electrons, for sure. But what's more, a hundred years of struggling to understand how gravity and quantum mechanics fit together has led us to think, not to know as an experimental fact, but to accept as a theoretical one, that matter and space are made of outrageously tiny pieces, strings. A string is a trillion times smaller than an electron, and quantum mechanics seems to say that the universe should be no larger than a string. So we face an intense conflict between our theories of the very small, which demand that the whole universe should be microscopic, and our everyday experience of an external world. So why is there a macroscopic universe at all? How did this happen? We don't know the answer today, but we do have a hint. When we dig at the foundations of physics, we find mathematical structures. String theory, it turns out, is a theory of numbers. Every universe that comes out of string theory is completely specified by a finite list of ordinary numbers. These numbers are like a code. Put in the code, and out comes a universe. And almost every code that we put in, we get out a universe no bigger than a string. But my research group at Cornell has found a new class of codes that give universes larger than our own from the equations of string theory. Here's one such code. It's small enough to fit on a t-shirt. This is the complete mathematical DNA of a universe more than 100 billion light years across, and all made of microscopic strings. The universes we found are not completely realistic. For one thing, they don't contain the particles needed for life. But they do answer the question, how can a quantum mechanical world be much, much larger than the particles that it contains? And perhaps by following this line of work, we'll one day understand how our own universe came to be.